How's it going? This is Matt Finch and welcome to Elevation Recovery. In this video, we've got something really cool that just came out today, Friday, April 30th, 2021. If you go to medscape.com, there's a new study, Addiction Medication Promising for Chronic Refractory Pain. Let's cover some of the fascinating findings of this. Low-dose naltrexone, LDN, may be effective in the treatment of refractory chronic pain, early research suggests. Preliminary data from a retrospective chart review of patients with chronic pain showed those who received LDN experienced significant improvement in both pain and disability. Naltrexone has been studied, especially in the setting of opioid and alcohol abuse, but we're seeing that at low doses, it has a paradoxical effect where it exhibits anti-inflammatory properties and it may be beneficial for patients with fibromyalgia or low back pain. The results showed that with appropriate patient selection, LDN could be an additional treatment option with the pain physician's toolkit. In addition, because the dose of naltrexone used to treat pain is so low, it's just one-tenth of the actual dose used in addiction, the potential for addiction is low, he noted. With high-dose naltrexone, you definitely have some of those risks with addiction, but thus far, there hasn't been any documented abuse potential with low-dose naltrexone, he added. These findings were presented at the Virtual American Academy of Pain Medicine, AAPM, 2021 annual meeting. The investigators wanted to understand the effects of low-dose naltrexone as an adjunct of treatment in their chronic pain patients, many of whom are refractory to first-line treatments. The study included 65 patients attending the UPMC pain clinic. Patients received low-dose naltrexone for a minimum period of one month and were followed longitudinally. Outcome measures included pain scores, percent improvement in disability, the OS3 Disability Index, ODI, and Patient Reported Outcomes Measurement Information System, PROMISE, metrics. Preliminary data analysis showed a statistically significant improvement in pain scores, percent improvement in disability, and ODI scores for patients who received low-dose naltrexone. These improvements were found at three and six months after treatment initiation. Patients also reported improved sleep and decreased pain interference using the PROMISE metric. Numerical pain scale scores improved from an average of 7.5 to 4.9 at three months following the start of low-dose naltrexone. In addition, investigators found a 40% improvement in disability at three months and this improvement increased to 50% at 12 months. Adverse effects included dry mouth, headache, dizziness, gastrointestinal upset, and vivid dreams. However, these were transient and generally mild. Overall, we definitely saw positive results in our clinic with low-dose naltrexone with the pain and disability scores, he noted. Ultimately, it will be important to do a randomized control trial to eliminate potential confounding variables and increase the study's generalizability in order to be able to say that LDN is helpful. But we can use this study as a foundation for such a trial, he said. I definitely think this is promising data that can be used to guide further studies, he said. For now, we can say that low-dose naltrexone has potential. It has a fascinating mechanism of action, safe side effect profile, and for the right patient, it can be a viable treatment option. Now we're on a study from 2014 on PubMed.com, and in this, I want to cover the alternate explanation of LDN mechanism they have. States, while we believe much data is consistent with that claim that LDN works via novel anti-inflammatory channels, there are alternative alternative compelling explanatory models of the LDN mechanism. The most prevalent hypothesis, advanced by Dr. Ian Zagon and colleagues, states that inducing a small and transient opioid blockade will prompt the body to compensate by upregulating both endogenous opioids and opioid receptors. The opioid upregulation effect of temporary naltrexone or naloxone blockade has been demonstrated multiple times previously. This opioid rebound effect could have multiple impacts on health and quality of life including enhanced endogenous analgesia and repression of critical immune factors. Further research is needed with naltrexone and naltrexone stereoisomers to determine the true mechanism of clinical action. In the meantime, we note that both the TLR4 and opioid receptor mechanisms may play a role in LDN action, as the hypotheses are not mutually exclusive. 
And finally, for our last resource, according to agelessrx.com, low-dose naltrexone, LDN, works with your endorphin and immune systems to reduce overall oxidative stress, leading to better moods, reduced pain, and less fatigue. Increase endorphin levels by up to three times, lower markers of inflammation in the body, reduces fatigue and brain fog, clinical evidence in reducing chronic pain, encourages weight loss in some patients, effective for a variety of conditions, e.g. Crohn's, fibromyalgia, depression, anxiety, autoimmune, and thyroid issues. Underneath that, it says LDA has not been approved by the FDA for these uses, but there are multiple studies that have shown these benefits. So there you have it. If you want to learn a lot more cool things about low-dose naltrexone for potentially helping with chronic pain, with addiction, with mental health disorders, fibromyalgia, and many other autoimmune diseases and mystery illnesses, I'll put a link in the description box of this video to my podcast episode with my co-host, Chris Scott, on the Elevation Recovery Podcast our episode on low-dose naltrexone, the mechanisms of action of low-dose naltrexone, the side effects of low-dose naltrexone, addiction potential of low-dose naltrexone, the dosages of low-dose naltrexone, where you can get low-dose naltrexone, and what the contraindications and interactions are with other drugs with low-dose naltrexone. This video is just for informational use only. It's not medical advice. Please consult with a physician if you believe you may have a condition. Additionally, please subscribe if you have not already and give this video a thumbs up if you got value from it. Thanks and see you next time.